You're here with James uh, Markarian, who's the executive uh, VP at uh, Informatica. Welcome. Thanks for coming on the queue. Hi. Thanks for having me, guys. You are nonstop. Very impressive. <laughs> oh, this, this is just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, talk to us tomorrow at 4, 4 p.m. But yeah. uh, this is going to be a walk in the park. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Um, this is uh, let's see the third Hadoop World. Right now, you guys yes. were probably here in some way, shape, or form last year, but you didn't have a big presence at the event, right? Um, right, that's right. So this is your first year sponsoring, is that correct? That's correct. That's so, correct. You know, you think of Informatica, you know, twenty-plus-year-old company doing a lot of, you know, uh, of t hard data problems with the structured data world, right. and now you're coming into this big data world. Tell us about, you know, what's that all about? What's going on there with Informatica? Great, thanks. So, so first of all, it's always very scary to me when people talk about us as a 20-year-old company because I remember when we first uh, started out, when I first joined about 13 years ago, we were this uh, tiny little. I remember that too. Yeah, I'm, we were a tiny, uh, uh, tiny little uh, nothing that nobody asked about, you know, for advice about anything. And now we have all these customers coming to us saying, "Hey, what what should we do about Hadoop, and what can Informatica do for us?" So this uh, new world of unstructured data processing is pretty uh, is pretty interesting and new. And I think we saw some statistics in the keynote the other day, um, uh, uh, this morning, that said that you know a lot of the instances that we're seeing you know, with Hadoop aren't necessarily terribly large. You know what they but what they're doing are you know interesting new things with unstructured information. Uh, we have customers that are doing things with uh, social media and lots of blog information. And it wasn't necessarily that you couldn't do these types of things in uh, traditional data warehousing environments or traditional database environments, but it just was either economically infeasible or it was actually you know, just plain difficult to get the types of analytics built uh, that, you, that you wanted to. So uh, we think Hadoop is you know, both about big data, of course, but also you know, exciting for unstructured data. So you've, you've made some announcements leading up to the event. I know H. Parser was one of the announcements. We wrote about it. Um, um, was that your first foray into this whole Hadoop space? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we've uh, been doing a few things around Hadoop. Um, the, H, the H parser was only the most recent announcement that we've had in the Hadoop space. We do have some other components that are out there. H parser is kind of an especially cool thing, though, in my in my view. Uh, a lot of what we see happening. Few ETL uh, geeks out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. Let me give you a, let me let me give you a chance to be convinced. So, uh, uh, what we're seeing on Hadoop, of course, is a lot of uh, processing of unstructured information, and what we're seeing uh, from the developer side is people are writing a lot of hand code, which is very inefficient. Uh, not only the first time you do it, but it's difficult to maintain, difficult to main, uh, keep up with the changes that are happening in all the different formats, whether it's Omniture logs, JSON formats, XML documents, you know, Swift, HIPAA documents, uh, anything you can think of. And so what this HParser technology allows you to do is really quickly uh, tease apart the different components of these unstructured documents into the components that you want to analyze. And you can access this functionality from Hive, from Pig, and from MapReduce. So it's very, uh, very quick to deploy, very fast executing uh, component, uh, and really cuts down the sort of time to value for, for Hadoop so, so that is kind of cool, and that's, a, that's a new territory for you guys. You come from the structured legacy, and, and so talk about what's different in unstructured land, and and why uh, you have credibility there. Well, uh, I guess those are maybe uh, two, uh, two, two different questions, um, but you know, I, I'd say uh, Unstructured has been around with us for a while. You know, it's, getting, it's getting a lot of attention now, but as uh, Informatica for a long time has been helping customers, like you heard uh, both uh, Morgan Stanley and uh, more recently J.P. Morgan Chase with Larry Finesmith, you know, we've been helping them handle uh, the processing of their various document formats, Swift processing, Excel spreadsheets, Word documents. Uh, and so we're just taking some of that same expertise and bringing it to- Was it 30,000 uh, databases? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that, 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 that's right. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good time to be right. Informatica when you have like customers out there with that, those sorts of uh, foot, footprints. Um, yeah, so um, we're just taking the expertise that we built up in the sort of non-Hadoop world, even around unstructured, and bringing it to Hadoop. But I think what's interesting about Hadoop is you're seeing you know, the real economics of information changing. And so we have customers that are doing things like mining their uh, social media influence networks to drive business value. Uh, we're seeing customers that are mining um, things like their survey verbatims, uh, seeing their mine sites like Yelp and Travelocity for feedback on their hotel experiences. And the interesting thing is that a lot of these problems uh, combine unstructured processing with transaction processing because you want to know who you should really be paying attention to. 
So, you know, I might post some random tweet about something, you know, should the company that I'm tweeting about actually care what I have to say about it? You know, did I actually stay at that property? Am I just um, retweeting effectively something that somebody told me that's not really verifiable? But when you can correlate unstructured information with an actual hotel stay and maybe even an actual hotel room, you bring those two worlds together, then you have really actionable information. That's what Informatica is helping. Our I uh, moderated a panel at, um, with uh, EMC down in the Bay Area. Talked about uh, you know big data and just kind of a business crowd. And uh, you guys were on the on the panel. Someone from Informatica, CTO, was there, and, we're, and and the conversation was interesting because you had a lot of business people in the world in the room who Hadoop was new to them. So, so my question is a little bit more of kind of phil philosophical one. And Mike Olson talked about you know this is not about just one island, right? Right. And that um, Hadoop is not a unification kind of business model where everyone's going to be unified. You guys are obviously have a huge presence in the market. What are you seeing out there in the legacy side of it that's changing specifically? Like, because you guys have that, that, that business there. What, what's going on there? How do you see that? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, a lot of customers have questions about how Hadoop fits in with everything. And, you know, to some extent, you know, my comment about Hadoop is it has to declare its major for really, you know, everyone to under, understand it. Because, you know, you even heard today there's guys that are focusing on the HBase side. There are guys that are focusing on the analytics side. So, you know, is it a transaction processing system? Um, like, you know, some of the guys were implying, is it a purely analytics environment? Um, so Informatica is really kind of seeing, you know, seeing this like everyone evolve. Um, I think that you know the most natural cases right now are around the analytics. Um, they're not really a substitute for other things that are going on. We're seeing it as a complement to existing analytic environments. Uh, you know, Hadoop doesn't you know yet support the full range of SLAs that you see with some of these traditional analytic environments, but it seems like it's it's getting there. Uh, so you know, I think it's just it's just early days with Hadoop, and I'd say that a lot of the people that I talked to at the conference yeah. are still just trying to figure out you know what what it is, what it means to them, and where it fits in with their so, IT landscape. So it's, it's it's maybe a major in in analytics with a minor in transaction processing. Is that your sort of vision for the future? Or how do you see that shaping up? Well, I think that you know I wouldn't want to presuppose anything about Hadoop right now. I think that it kind of looks that way now. Um, I think that there's um, nothing but green space or green field ahead of Hadoop. Yeah, very smart guys working on it. Yeah, I think when you look at how Hadoop got started, some of you know, the early papers that came out of um, both uh, Google and Amazon, uh, now it reminded me a lot of how relational databases got you know, really kick-started. So like back in the 70s, Cod and Date write a paper, Larry Ellison and Bob Miner read the paper, and it's like, hey, I'm, I'm you know, reading about the future here. And when you read the you know, seminal papers around Hadoop and MapReduce, it's like, hey, you, you get a feeling like you're really glim glimpsing the future of something. And I think like we didn't know exactly how relational databases would evolve at that point, you know, it's a little bit early to tell where Hadoop is going. I think it's going to have a healthy footprint in, in both transactions. I mean, you got to like the attendance problems. here. 1,400 people, mm -hmm. packed house. I mean, they're going to need the Moscone Center next. I mean, like, I mean, this demand. I mean, and it's not just geeks, too. There's business people here, right? So, so you mentioned SLA. I mean, you have a lot of experience dealing with SLAs. I mean, what are the key factors in the SLA kind of component of this that, you, that you're keeping an eye on that you guys are they're watching and, and developing? Yeah, there's a whole spectrum of things in the SLA that we care about, right? So, you, know, you even heard Larry uh, this morning in the keynote talk about you know some uptime and stability concerns. Like there's some very basic elements of the SLA, like <laughs> if the system's not you know <laughs> yeah, available, yeah. or if you have to worry about you know data corruptions. Yeah, that's sort of telling you that we're in an early stage in the market, and also like you have to start thinking about well, how business critical is that information? If there's some you know, degree of tolerance for those sorts of outages, mm -hmm. then if you go all the way to the other end and talk about the from an analyst perspective, and you think about everything that went into OLAP processing. You know, so relational provided analytics, but it wasn't good enough for a lot of business analysts. They couldn't slice and dice quickly enough, couldn't really satisfy their, you know, sort of fast twitch, you know, need for, uh, for information. And Hadoop, you know, again, is really good at uh, relatively high latency, uh, high scale analytics, but isn't necessarily an environment where this writing on top of vanilla Hadoop, you'd want to sit there and slice and dice information. That's why we're seeing a lot of the tools build up to build effectively caching and other things on top of Hadoop to provide that sort of uh, SLA for their users. And, and, and bring some structure to that Wild West. Um, how about 
your relationship with Cloudera. What is what, what's going on there? And, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have a partnership with Cloudera that was announced uh, several months ago. Uh, we have a certified integration with Cloudera. We have a connector to HDFS and are going to be coming out with a connector to um, uh, to uh, HBase, of course. Uh, and so we are seeing kind of where things go. I and mean, what you what you see with Hadoop is it's this kind of big, powerful engine, but. Uh, despite Mike's comments, uh, data doesn't originate uh, in Hadoop, and a lot of cases, data doesn't terminate in Hadoop. And so Hadoop is just like one of many happy stops along the way for data, and Informatica wants to be a part of that process, getting data in and out of Hadoop. And also, you know, you heard about the skills shortages around, you know, MapReduce. Everyone you know, had their hiring pitch at the uh, at the talks this morning. And what we're seeing from our customers is, hey, you know, we don't necessarily want, you know, a whole army of MapReduce programmers. We have people that know Informatica. We have people that know SQL. Can they leverage those skills and have that actually be effectively our programming environment for these uh, for our Hadoop environment? And so our our answer to that has to be yes. And, and uh, talk a little bit about that data origination comments that you made, because you mean data originates in devices and machines, and is that what you're talking about? Yeah, or? yeah, that's right. So where is data first transacted, right? So, you know, just for an example, since we're uh, here uh, a little bit north of the uh, Occupy Wall Street uh, movement, um, mm -hmm. which also does um, some financial tra transactions down there, I think. Uh, so we have customers that do things like, if you look at our messaging business and ultra low latency messaging, yeah, we have customers that are transacting at the sub microsecond level, right? So you have trades uh, that go in and, and are measured in nanoseconds nowadays, not even, not even microseconds. Those transactions happen very, very fast. They're originated in very high performance trade execution systems. Mm -hmm. And then they're actually you know, shipped out to analytics environments like uh, Teradata and like, uh, and like Hadoop. Um, so that data is, um, it's going to be a very long time before that data gets originated in something like Hadoop. Like you can't have stability yeah. questions when you're taking down you know, a billion trades a second, like in some cases. Um, so we're, you know, that's like yeah. one tip of the iceberg. So that, that, that's yeah. what I talk about when I'm talking about where data really starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the kumbaya of big data. We're here, you know, we've called this Hadoop world the burning man of big data. You know, it's an you know, organic community, it's growing, but the reality is these big businesses are running massively scaled environments. So that's what you're referring to, right? I mean, this is like an... Yeah, that's right, both yeah. on the transaction side and also on the analytics yeah. uh, side. And, you know, it's, it took a, a lot of time for a lot of smart people to build yeah. up transaction environments that could uh, handle those types of volumes. I think it's always tempting to treat, you know, the, our forefathers yeah. as idiots, like, you know, what were yeah, those yeah. guys doing? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so much easier now. But there's actually some, you know, pretty good technology behind that. This is what's interesting <laughs> about Hadoop is that the use cases are so diverse you don't really need to have one unified anything anymore. You could have specific Hadoop instances deployed in those use cases as, a, as applicable. Right? Yeah, so that's right. And I, I think also that just the appetite in IT for niche solutions for specific, you know, um, either persistence or analytics problems is so much higher than it was just a few yeah. years ago where you, know, you could do anything you wanted a few years ago as long as it was in an Oracle database. And now with the NoSQL movement, with the Hadoop movement, you're seeing you know this sort of um, not it's indifference really to like you know brand name persistent stores and the problems are so big and diverse now that people just want great technology solutions. Yeah, purpose built. That's yeah, kind yeah, of that's, a, that's and it's not right. um, it's not as it doesn't feel anyway as incremental. I mean, there's some pretty radical things going on, and companies are looking around saying, "Well, I better hop in, or I'm going to lose competitive advantage." I mean, the numbers that J.P. Morgan Chase showed today were were pretty impressive in terms of cost savings and business advantage that they're driving. That's right, and so, and I think that you know, ultimately, you have to think about the business drivers behind all of it. So, to some extent, IT is in a position where they have to they have to innovate, they have to take chances, they have to apply the latest technologies if they're going to keep up with the pace of change in the industry. You know, like as soon as like Lehman failed, you know, the questions that uh, Larry brought up, like what's what's our customer's exposure to Greece, for example, those are questions that are super hard to answer when you think about all the indirect ways in which financial instruments are linked together. And so they, they simply have to innovate in order to be able to answer those questions 
respond to their board, respond to their shareholders about what their exposure really is. You know, there's a lot of talk about it, and I'd love to get your take on this, James, even though it might not be, well, it, it, it's, it's related, but not central to what you guys are doing. There's a lot of talk about uh, making it easier for business people to use Hadoop, and we're clearly not there yet, uh, despite what some of the rhetoric is. So what are your thoughts there, and, and, and how important is that? How likely is that? Um, is that a, a reality in your view in the next, you know, five or seven years? Well, I think one of, you know, the, the principles behind Hadoop, you know, we've had MPP computing for a very long time, but it's always been like the true, like not only the geeks, but the geeks among geeks uh, that have been able to harness the power of, you know, Cray machines or the connection machine back in the day. And it was like this big Thinking machine. And there, yeah, that's right. And there was Danny Daniel Hillis. Hillis. That's, yeah, that's right. Where is he now? He's probably <laughs> saying, hey, that was my idea. <laughs> so, um, you know, now, um, you know, the, the thing that's really interesting about Hadoop is it's sort of putting a lot of compute power in lots of people's hands. So it's kind of like a democratization of high power or computing. And um, so I think that there is always going to be this push to move that power higher up in the stack. And to the extent that technologies like or languages like MapReduce and Pig and Hive, you know, simplify that, um, I think that's important, but it's not really going to be until, you know, I think like Data Mirror, for example, is an excellent way to do that because what a, what all the business people want to use, at the end of the day, they just want a spreadsheet. You have, this, tell, right. you have this nice spreadsheet on top of, you know, this thousand node Hadoop cluster, and you can start getting, you know, real time uh, information across massive amounts of information. I think that's getting us close. The business user is always kind of an elusive thing. Everyone's been talking about this. Like, you know, I guess the, the question you would end up asking is, have we even solved that, you know, in the traditional BI, you know, world? And, you know, there's certainly companies like ClickTech and Tableau that are saying, you know, no, no, we haven't. And I think, you know, we're, we're a pretty long way from that happening in, in Hadoop as well. Yeah, uh, my last question, yep. James, is, uh, relates to the whole competitive environment. Last year it was you know, one horse race and now you're seeing some choices come about. What, what are you guys seeing there? What's your take on the whole, you know, Hortonworks enters, you got EMC and MapR doing their thing. And What's your, what's your angle on that? I'd be really, really concerned about the Hadoop community if that wasn't happening. You know, if you had, <laughs> if you had one vendor that was the only champion for it, you know, I think that you'd have to look at it as an IT buyer and say, that looks really risky to me. So, you know, again, not, not that all roads lead back to relational, but you, know, you look at the foundations of you know, relational and all the companies that sprang up. Um, well, IBM didn't exactly spring up, but you know, they were there, Oracle, Informix, Ingress, Sybase. You know, many billion dollar plus companies were built around you know, one very good idea. It was actually very good for the ecosystem. They all pushed each other, they made SQL better, they gave IT buyers confidence that this is a trend that's going to be here to stay. Even if this company doesn't succeed, I have a standards-based solution, I can migrate my applications over to something else that you know, will be there. And and I think it's a really, really good sign for Hadoop. Great, my, my final question, and that was a great comment, by the way. I think that's right on the money. Um, my final question is, we were talking with Kirk Dunn about uh, the, the concept of cloud washing, which everyone's been talking about, slap cloud on it. Um, is there a Hadoop, we haven't heard that word Hadoop washing yet, but you know, it's getting to the point now where it's so frothy, VCs are putting up $100 million, clients are hearing about big data, you know, from all the, out in the external world, I mean, if there was cloud washing, meaning slapping on the word, I mean uh, Hadoop washing, slapping on Hadoop on to, hey, we're Hadoop, whatever. What would we, what would we look for? I mean, is, is that even existing or is it just so diverse? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. I hadn't really quite uh, considered that. So I think, you know, for, first of all, um, you know, the, the, cloud, the cloud economics are such that I think the cloud is inevitable to a certain extent. I think that the Hadoop value proposition makes it itself I inevitable. Um, I, I don't know if everyone's going to be adding like you know, H onto everything the way they add you know, like I or this or that for, uh, for cloud. Um, I think that the thing that you would always look at is, um, is there a discernible customer business value that's been delivered for whatever you know, the company is trying to convince you, you know, has to do applicability? If there's customer value, then it looks, you know, looks and sounds legit. If there's not that discernible customer value, I think you do have to you know, wonder whether this is just kind of marketing or whether it's something yeah. real. All right, James Markarian, thanks very much from Informatica for coming on theCUBE. Great story, great guest. Appreciate you uh, okay. taking time out with us. Great. Thanks.